Hi folks, I'm Spence and on today's episode of Court Mania we're going to be looking at what is often thought of as one of the worst zombie films, in fact one of the worst films ever made, Zombie Lake. Now, Zombie Lake was written and planned to be directed by Jess Franco, which tells you exactly where we are at in this. He dropped out and then Jean Rollin took over the project. I mean, again, that tells you where we are. And apparently did so without reading the script and then read the script and instantly regretted taking the project on. And as I said, this has become famous for being one of the worst zombie films ever made. And yeah, it, it really is. <laughs> So what's Zombie Lake about? It's about a lake full of zombies. The lake! Or well, by f full, I mean there's five of them. Basically, they are Nazi zombies. This is set in the 1950s in a small French village where back during the war, they killed a bunch of Nazi soldiers and threw them in a cursed lake because that's what you would do. Um, and now anyone that goes in the lake gets munched by zombies, supposedly, although the fact that this hasn't happened before and people must have been going in the lake, d d d d d d who cares? Basically, someone goes for a nudie swim, zombie comes out, zombie goes and starts wandering about the village, then more people start turning up and more zombies start turning up and people start dying. And then we also have this weird plot about a one of the Nazis had a baby with one of the French women and is now like trying to find his child because he somehow has memories despite being a zombie and that's never really explained. And yeah, and then it's like, oh no, we've got Nazi zombies, we need to kill them. I mean, no one was going to watch this film for the plot, but even so, the, the, the fact that they sort of tried and had this weird sentimental plot line about this... Nazi it is very strange. The fact that the entire film is pretty much told from the point of view of of Nazis is quite strange. Um, the film is far more sympathetic towards towards. It's almost like someone went, "Okay, the zombies have to be Nazi zombies because that's going to be the thing. That's going to be." But they're like, "Oh, but we want this sentimental plot." line about the soldier who returns and finds his, his grown-up child it doesn't it doesn't work do you know who the man with the medallion is yes he's my father i won't let you hurt him i won't and he would like to be dead i i don't know if this is from the fact that it's from a spanish script and obviously Spain, fascist, all that sort of stuff, or whether this was just... I don't know. I can't, I can't explain, because it's a French-made film, so why are the, the French these people who ambushed these German soldiers and threw them in a cursed lake and it's now their... it's, it's their problem? What? You will recognise barely no one. If you are a Jess Franco fan, you will recognise Howard Vernon, who plays the the mayor in in the town. That's literally everyone. I couldn't. I mean, he's just called the mayor. I couldn't remember a single other character's name. I knew them by that's the guy with the fabulous moustache. That's the little girl. That's the news reporter who turns up as well to, to investigate the lake, without seemingly knowing that the remote is going up, which is very strange. It, it, I mean, there is some clunkingly bad dialogue. I mean, the fact that Jean Rollin, a man who lost the script to his first film and just kept making it without any script, thought the script for this film was bad, it should tell you something. Um, there are just bizarre moments throughout. Uh, the first girl goes missing and then they decide, we'll wait 24 hours in case she turns up. Then they realise that she's not turned up, and then they decide to wait another 24 hours before speaking to the police. Why? Um, 
it frequently, despite being called Zombie Lake, I can't remember what the translation is. I think it might be Lake of the Damned or something is the, the original title. Um, they frequently refer to the zombies as ghosts. I hope you don't really think ghosts kill them. Yes, that's what I think. They're probably called ghosts more than zombies. Um, sometimes, though, this will be in the same conversation. Someone will say, we must do something about the ghosts. And then their next line of dialogue, they will say, I'm glad we're going to do something about the zombies. And, what? They're also not zombies. Um, I mean, they, they are. They're dead and back to life. Uh, they don't eat people, though. They... They drink their blood, it would appear. Um, that's what the legend of the lake tells us, and that's a seemingly what they do. We don't get any intestine eating or anything, bearing in mind that this came out in 1981, um, but I'll get to that when I talk about the effects, if you can call them that. It's, it's just a weirdly inconsistent script that makes no... The thing is, I, I was watching it subtitled in, you know, watching it in French, subtitled on the Arrow channel, and you'd think someone might have just gone, you know what, fuck it, we'll, um, we'll even this out in the subtitle so that they are just zombies. Very, very weird. You're right damn right. Let's... We better face the fact that zombies have declared war. Our fate's now in our own hands. We must find a way to safeguard our town from the mad murdering zombies. We are not powerless. We must act. Now, the film lacks any real quality cinematography at all. I mean, you can kind of go that it's impressive that there are some underwater shots. Um, because the budget is so low. Clearly, the fact that they actually did do some underwater shots is relatively cool, maybe. Um, but there is nothing about any of it that looks good. Uh, I mean, you can tell whenever they are underwater that they are in a swimming pool because you can see the walls of the swimming pool. You can see that it is lapping when they look upwards. And the fact that it just tonally, colour-wise, looks nothing like the manky old lake that they shot around. <laughs> the town has nothing great to look at. There are no fabulous sets. Um, you know, Jean Rolin is shot in very gothic locations before. This doesn't have the beach in it, which shows that he was just a gun for hire for this film. You don't get that, that, that beach. Um, oh, I guess you do get water. Um, there are points at which he, I think you can tell that he's trying to make the town look sort of vaguely cool by getting some nice close-up shots of like some gargoyles on the side of a building. But it really is not a, it's not a good film to look at. Um, you will have a bad time looking at this film. I mean, the most creative cinematography is either being underwater or there are shots where you will look at something and then diagonally pan down to the action. That happens a lot. Unfortunately, what you're looking at isn't worth looking at either. Um, you know, most zombie films you think... Yay! At least there will be zombies and effects and cool stuff. Uh, no. Not here. The zombies themselves are appalling, all five of them. Um, they're green. Very, very green. It takes the whole Dawn of the Dead, bluey-grey zombie thing way too far. They are, like, neon green. Um... The, the main zombie, the, the guy with the kid, has nothing exciting about his... I think he has a scar on his head. Whereas the others, there's one with an eye missing. There's one that's got this just weird... He looks a bit like Rudolph because he's got just a red nose that I think is supposed to be like a wound, but it just looks bright red. Um, they're awful. And the green paint was not waterproof. Um, so when they come out of the water, they're frequently very blotchy. 
there are points at which you can see the backs of their necks haven't been done. It transfers, so when they are eating, drinking people's blood, they become green. Um, the blood effects, this whole idea that they're drinking people's blood often is just that clearly the zombie had some blood in its mouth. So when it goes, it sort of just pulls out. Uh, it looks awful. You get a couple of wounds that you see later that are just like someone stuck a bit of latex or something to someone around some red paint. Um, the film, yeah, is very, very disappointing on the the violence front. Uh, if you're coming to this for nudity, you will have a bit of a better time. Um, depending on which version you see, there is a censored version that, um, like the the people going swimming wear bikinis and stuff like that, and don't wear you know, wear tops in scenes that they don't before. But anyway, that's not the version we want because well, we've got to look at something, so we might as well look at boobs. And you will get quite a lot of boobs in this film. Um, probably more so than a lot of other genre living films. The film is in no way sexy at all. It Because that would take some sort of skill, which John really does have. Um, some of his other films do have a, a sort of weird... They do feel somewhat sexy, even if they are very strange. I think it's because they're strange. This doesn't have that. You are just seeing some boobs, um, or quite a lot of boobs at one point. There's a whole basketball team that turn up, despite the fact they appear to play volleyball, uh, and then decide to take all their clothes off and get in the lake. Um, so you get that. Uh... If you see on the, the lovely Arrow Channel version, which is pretty beautifully restored, I mean, there's some, you know, there's noise and scratches, but picture quality-wise looks great because you can see Fanny in the underwater sequences. So if you've been missing out on Fanny recently, this film will work. Um, it's a lot of bush going on. So if, if that's what... There's no Todd. If, if, if you like male nudity, you've got, you've got nothing. Um, sorry. You also get a, uh, a sex scene between the, the, the heroic Nazi man and the, the, the French girl. That has some nudity. Great. Uh, there's quite a lot, prolonged scene in which only the woman's nipple is in focus. Um, but I mean, it is in no way sexy because it's literally just two people writhing on top of one another. Just... You know, like how a dog nuzzles when it's trying to like scratch its ear against like a sofa or something. It's literally watching two people do that for about five minutes. It's the most, it's the most unsexy sex scene I think I've ever seen. Also, I mean, it's it's got its own mistake. They they put a, a coat down to lie on because they're on some hay. Um, it just makes you think of that, let's have a roll in the hay bit from Young Frankenstein. Anyway, um, they miss it. He lies her down, she's laying on the hay. Me? I didn't see them. Do you think that if any one of us had seen those poor girls, we would have let them go out there and get killed? Don't you think we'd have told them to stay away from the lake? The soundtrack to the film, pretty poop. Um, a lot of the sort of zombie attacks take place to just a cacophony of drums and synthesizers and horribleness that is just an assault to the senses. Um, in that sort of very... Franco did very similar things where it's just... You feel like someone would call it jazz, but it isn't. It's just a noise. It's a, it's a load of instruments thrown down the stairs. There are some sort of low, warbly synth sounds that again sound incredibly old. I constantly have to remind myself that this is a, a film from the 80s. It feels... It feels old. It feels older than something like Night of the Living Dead, which which I think is the thing, that you think it's older than that, 
and then you remember that it wouldn't exist if that film didn't. But yeah, there there are some points at which strings come into the soundtrack. Now, I cannot confirm this. Um, they sound like library tracks rather than anything composed with them because they don't necessarily tonally fit, but they sound a lot better than the rest of the score. But who knows? The most important thing about the soundtrack is the looped nature sounds. Now, every single outdoor sequence within this film, you will hear the same bird call. It's in the same loop twice, about five seconds apart, and the loop is only about 20 seconds long. Thus, you will hear a bird sort of do a sound a lot to the point that I was sat watching this with my parents and we laughed every single time it happened or I did at least uh, if you want to play a drinking game whilst playing Zombie Lake playing Zombie Lake? watching Zombie Lake um, do not take a shot every time you hear that bird call because you will be blind by by the end of the film, it plays that often. And that just that is a, a clear indication of the, the technical quality of of the film. There are multiple points in which crew members can be spotted in the background, including within the first couple of minutes. Uh, cars and buses driving around in the background that are clearly not period accurate. Almost certainly continuity errors, nothing is just springing to mind. You have shots that have been repeated over and over, um, including one that I'm pretty sure is just reversed. Um, the battle sequences! The battle sequences are just atrocious. It really is the worst gun sounds and people just diving around, shooting at the sky. There is an explosion at least. Um, people running around, diving to the floor. Apparently just Nazis. Um, Cause you never see it. You never see who anyone's shooting at apart from when the Nazis are killed. It's generally just people firing. I I lost complete track of time. Oh, of space. There's a bit where someone radios about that the Nazis are moving. It was snowing before. It's not. It looks like it was half a year later that the people responded to the fact that that at the end of the film. Spoiler alert for anyone that cares. Um. They, they burn the zombies um, with a massive flamethrower, which actually is pretty cool. Um, I will give them that. Apart from the fact that you go from a room of five zombies to when they actually sort of spray the zombies. They spray one mannequin. He's not moving at all. Uh, there is a scene where the zombies emerge from the lake, which is repeated many times. The first time you see it though, they've edited it too early. One of the zombies is above the water, goes back down and comes back up again. Like, obviously they're all stood, told, okay, duck down and then come up. So they weren't holding their breath underwater for ages. Yeah, they've got the guy going down still. It is absolutely no wonder that Jean Rollin didn't want his name on this. And the fact that some of his films are so shoddy. And he'd, he'd been doing, like, nudie softcore stuff, you know, more just porn before doing this film. The fact that he still didn't want his name on it tells you everything. He's credited under J.A. Laser, which is a fantastic pseudonym. Um, it does make him sound like he's like got a SoundCloud or something. There is also a a Julian de Lazarena, 
credited on IMDb. He, apparently he's uncredited. Um, I didn't see his name on the credits anywhere. Who worked on no other film than this one. Um, he's also listed as a director. Fuck knows. Um, he may well have done stuff. Perhaps he did the underwater stuff. Um, but the fact that he's not credited at all shows that... And, and never did anything else tells you the quality of some of the directing, if this person did any. It, it, it is shocking. Um, I mean, the fact that it's written by Franco tells you... The fact that Franco wrote it and then thought, you know what, I'm not going to do this one. It, should, it, it just does tell you everything. It... It is not a film to watch uh, to tell your friends why genre lean films are great because I like the I really like the vampire stuff. I think it's really interesting. Got a visual style. The strangeness of it is really interesting and enticing. This has none of that. It has. It looks awful. The dialogue is awful. The effects are awful, and it's truly hilarious. I. I shouldn't recommend it to anyone, but you will struggle to have a better time with a film for just sheer laughing at it. You know, it is the room levels of crap. Um, so if you can, if you have the Arrow Channel, there are far worse ways to spend eighty-three minutes. It clocks along. You'll get your boobs straight away, literally. Uh, the crap dialogue is is frequent enough. It is it is hilarious. So I I kind of have to recommend it. Um, if you like so bad it's good cinema, you can do far far worse than Zombie. Like I'd have it up there with like Zombie Three as one of the best bad zombie films. But that is just my opinion. Have you seen Zombie Lake? What did you think of it? What is the worst zombie film you have ever seen? Let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. And I shall see you next time.